Welcome to this extensive lecture series organized by Center for Computational Technologies, Pune. This lecture is part of an advanced module for multiphase flow. In this particular lecture, we will see fundamentals of multiphase flow modeling. Let us have an overview of this particular lecture. In this particular lecture, we will see how single phase flow is modeled. We will see various dimensionless numbers. We will see what exactly is Eulerian and Lagrangian specification. Then we will see multiphase flow modeling approaches, which are Eulerian Lagrangian, Eulerian Eulerian, and volume of fluid. We will study in brief Eulerian Lagrangian model, the Eulerian Eulerian model, and the volume of fluid model. As we all know, we are going to study multiphase modeling particularly from a software point of view or how exactly multiphase flow is modeled in Fluent, commercial CFD software Fluent. But it is very important to have a feel of what exactly happens behind the scenes. That is, what exactly happens in this commercial software from mathematical point of view or physics point of view or from fluid mechanics point of view. When we say we are using volume of fluid model, to model our two-phase flow problem or when we use volume of fluid model for any project that we perform, what exactly are we modeling, what exactly fluid mechanics or mathematical modeling are we carrying out within the software. So it is extremely important to have this feel and it will give you the power of making very important modeling decisions which will affect your project as well as your understanding of the project. So let us begin our uh, quest to study what exactly happens behind the scenes. So this particular lecture is basically behind the scenes. So when we see single phase flow, we already know it is modeled by governing equations that is containing equation, momentum equation and the energy equation. All these are solved at the cell level that is we divide the entire volume into different cells or domains and we solve these equations at each particular cell by using various discretization schemes that is finite difference on finite volume schemes or finite element schemes. So what we should have in mind when we see single phase flow is what we have already studied in the basic fundamental module that we had is single phase flow are modeled by just continuity equation, the momentum equation, energy equation. These are solved in discretized form at each cell. It is uh, extremely important to remember some non-dimensional or dimensionless numbers which are associated with multiphase flow. First is the Reynolds number given by symbol RE. It is expressed as the ratio of the inertial force to viscous force and mathematically given by this particular equation. That is, it is the ratio of the density, the length scale, the velocity scale divided by the viscosity. Next is the Peclet number which is given by the symbol PE. Its significance is that it is the ratio of the convective transport to the molecular transport of energy or mass. It is given by the ratio of density, specific heat, length scale, velocity scale divided by conductivity. Next is the Prandtl number, it is given PR. Significance is, is the ratio of the momentum diffusivity to the thermal diffusivity and it is given by the ratio of the specific heat multiplied by the viscosity divided by the conductivity. Next parameter is the Schmidt number. It is given by the symbol SC and it is uh, its significance is basically it's the ratio of momentum diffusivity to mass diffusivity. It is given by the ratio of the viscosity divided by density and the length scale that is D. Next is the Nusselt number which is given by a symbol NU. Its significance is that it is the ratio of the total transfer to the molecular transfer of energy. By mathematically it is given by a ratio of the uh, heat transfer coefficient divided by the length scale heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the length scale divided by conductivity. Next is the Stanton number given by the symbol ST. Significance is that it is the ratio of interface transport to bulk transport. This Stanton number is mathematically given by ratio of the heat transfer coefficient divided by the product of specific heat, density and the velocity. Next is the Weber number given by the symbol WE. It is the ratio of the inertial to the surface forces. It is mathematically given by this particular ratio. 
do remember these dimensionless numbers at least uh, if not their ratios but remember their significance and from their significance you can actually go towards their ratios by just remembering which term means what and uh, it's not necessary to remember them by heart but it is very important to remember the significance by which you would be able to use these numbers in your analysis and the details of this number are given in any heat transfer or mass transfer related book I would refer to in Kuropeda David the fundamentals of heat, tra heat and mass transfer and they have given in detail various significance of this all these numbers in various contexts as well as their mathematical treatment so now we move on to some basic fundamental specification or frameworks or systems there are two types of such specifications there is Eulerian and next is the Lagrangian so by Eulerian what we mean now um, the, these these two specifications are used or defined in various depending upon how they are used in various contexts but we will focus on fundamental and very basic level that is what do we mean by Eulerian and what do we mean by Lagrangian Eulerian framework or Eulerian specification means the observer follows an individual fluid parcel as it moves through space and time equations are composed by using this fundamental concept so by Eulerian what we should understand is we follow the fluid parcels as it moves through space and time now the Lagrangian specification means we focus on specific locations in, in space through which the fluid passes that means we are standing at a location and the fluid process and all the equations are written based on this fundamental equation that we are constant we have a constant location so Eulerian in short means riding with the particle or parcels of particle and Lagrangian means constant at a specific location Now uh, the modeling approaches or the model equa modeling equations are uh, written or composed keeping this particular understanding in mind that is Eulerian and Lagrangian and so, so the fundamentals or the fundamental uh, philosophy or concept behind modeling is we model the continuous, fa continuous phase flow by Eulerian and depending upon the complexity of the flow we decide whether we are going to write the equations or compose the equation of the dispersed or the secondary phase by either using the Lagrangian method or Eulerian method so we can do this mix match depending upon how complex our flow is and solve either of the phase by Lagrangian or Eulerian or both of the phases by Eulerian so the first of this is the Eulerian Lagrangian method or model which utilizes Eulerian framework for the continuous phase and Lagrangian framework for the dispersed phase Next is the Eulerian Eulerian which utilizes the Eulerian framework for all phases that is any phase involved is modeled or the equations of those are written by using the Eulerian framework. Next is the volume of fluid in, again in this the Eulerian framework for both phases is used but there is specialized interface treatment that is the interface between the two or the multiple phases is modeled by introducing a separate set of equations or a separate set of mathematical treatment other than the Eulerian framework or the Eulerian equation now let us have a pictorial imagination of this just to remember these concepts in detail the first modeling approach is the Eulerian Lagrangian so let us imagine a very vast continuous medium given by this blue color this is the continuous phase and the discrete phase is dispersed as particles within the continuous phase so these small pink type of circles are basically the discrete or the dispersed secondary phase so these uh, secondary phase are moving about in the continuous phase are affected by the continuous phase and sometimes they also affect the continuous phase velocities what we mean by Eulerian Lagrangian is the Eulerian framework governing equation used for this continuous phase so this uh, continuous phase is solved by one set of Eulerian equations now uh, there is coupling between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase that is when this particular small particle moves due to drag left and various other forces it exchanges momentum and energy to the continuous phase so this may be one way or two way that is the continuous phase may affect the particle as well as the particle may affect the continuous phase so this coupling of momentum and energy exists between particle and continuous fluid this has to be considered when modeling so this is considered and the trajectory of the dispersed phase is calculated by solving equation of motions 
So this dispersed phase is not solved by a traditional governing equation that is Navier-Stokes, but they are solved by equation of motion. That is, they are solved in Lagrangian framework. So this is the imagination behind Eulerian Lagrangian model. Next is the Eulerian Eulerian model. So in the Eulerian Eulerian model, both the dispersed phase and the continuous phase are solved or modeled using the governing equations that is Eulerian equations. So the same imagination applies here that is the continuous phase is the blue vast continuous phase and small particles or droplets are dispersed in this continuous phase given by the pink circles. So what we do is control volume is uh, used to define phase velocities that is we model both the phases by using the Eulerian framework of governing equations and we define control volume and solve these equations within the control volume and we obtain the phase velocities and volume fraction of both the phases are also solved at these control volume. Now the coupling as we talked about that is in short governing equation that Eulerian governing equation is solved for both phases there is no equation of motion or Lagrangian equations involved here. So what we have already talked is the continuous phase mostly affects the dispersed phase and sometimes the, con the dispersed phase also affects the continuous phase. So there is momentum and energy transfer between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase. Now this is solved here by using volume average equations. So volume average equations are solved for the dispersed phase and this exchange between the dispersed phase and the continuous phase is taken into consideration. So this is the Eulerian Eulerian framework or the Eulerian Eulerian model. Next is the volume of fluid model. Now the volume of fluid model is particularly used for stratified or what we can call separated flows. So what we can see here is the dispersed phase or secondary phase is distinctly separated from the continuous phase. And we have distinct interface between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase. Now, in, in the volume of fluid model, one set of governing equation is solved for both phases using combined mixture properties. So what we solve is only a single set of governing equations and we solve them for mixture properties. To obtain the mixture properties, a concept called volume fraction is used. And this volume fraction weighted mixture properties are used. So whatever properties like density, viscosity, specific heat, etc. are basically of the mixture and not of any single phase. So all these mixture properties are used and we solve a single set of governing equations. Now the question will be how we actually obtain this interface or how we define that this phase is different from the continuous phase and how do we obtain its location and position. So basically to obtain its location and position what we do is we, we basically model volumetric forces and we do interface tracking. So uh, various mathematical techniques are used to track this interface and obtain its location. And in addition to the single set of governing equation, we also use interface tracking techniques. First, we will study the Eulerian Lagrangian model in detail. Okay, so now uh, let us move on to individual models uh, and let us see how these individual models are composed and the modeling approach behind them as well as the governing equations uh, associated with them. The first of the uh, three is the Eulerian Lagrangian model. Within the Eulerian Lagrangian model, the continuous phase is modeled using the Eulerian framework, that is, Eulerian method of equations. Whereas for the dispersed phase, equation of motions are solved. The governing equations are not solved for the dispersed phase. That is, the Navier-Stokes equations are not solved for the dispersed phase. Now let us move on to individual models. In this, we will see how these models are composed. What is the modeling approach behind all, all these individual models as well as we will see the governing equations associated with these models. The first is the Eulerian Lagrangian model. In this model, the continuous phase is modeled using the Eulerian framework or the Eulerian method of equations. Whereas for the dispersed phase, equation of motions are solved. The governing equations are not solved for the dispersed phase. This particular approach is ideally suitable for low volume loading or low volume fraction of the dispersed phase. 
this is mainly because we are not resolving or modeling the dispersed phase by governing equations we are just considering the equation of motion for the dispersed phase so when the effect of dispersed phase is comparatively lower we can use this approach another assumption in this approach is that the volume displacement due to the dispersed phase motion is ignored this means whenever there is any displacement or whenever a dispersed phase particle travels it displaces some volume within the continuous phase but this difference in volume or displacement of volume is ignored in this particular approach now we will see the governing equations associated with the eulerian lagrangian model now before we discuss any of the governing equation we would like to note here that that in this particular lecture we are not going to discuss the energy equations or energy exchange equations associated with any of the model this is basically just to keep things simpler that is we will just study how the continuous phase and, and the dispersed phase are connected by continuity equation and momentum equation but we will not see how energy is exchanged between these two phases when we study individual models that is when we study eulerian lagrangian eulerian eulerian and vof model in detail in their advanced lectures we will discuss the energy exchange as well uh, so let us begin with the governing equations now the continuous phase is modeled by governing equations that is within the each volume or within each cell continuity equation is solved for the continuous phase as well as the momentum equation is solved for the continuous phase now you can note here that there is a term given by sc in the continuity equation on the right hand side instead of zero as well as in the momentum equation there is a term scm this is nothing but the source term arising from the exchange between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase now for the dispersed phase the governing equations that is the navier stokes equation are not solved instead the trajectories of the dispersed phase are calculated using equation of motion equation of motion here is nothing but newton's law of motion so what we do for the dispersed phase is that we write a newton's law of motion equation that is mass into acceleration is equal to sum of all the forces now the crux of the eulerian lagrangian model is the consideration or modeling of these forces so we need to consider all possible forces that are associated with the exchange or with the interaction between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase we will see these forces one by one you can see here that various terms uh, such as various force terms like fp fd fvm fl fh and fg are given among these fd is the rack force fp is the pressure force fvm is the virtual mass force and fg is the body force so uh, let us discuss the first term that is the pressure force this basically arises due to the pressure differential which is acting on the dispersed part phase particles or dispersed phase uh, entities so what this means is that uh, there is a force acting due to the pressure differential which due to which the particles move this force is given by nothing but the velocity multiplied by the pressure differential next is the body force due to gravity as gravitational acceleration is acting on the individual dispersed phase particles this particular force also contributes to its motion so we also include the gravitational force that is a body force due to gravity it is given by a product of the density of the dispersed phase its velocity and its gravitation and the gravitational force let us discuss the first among this that is the pressure force now this pressure force arises due to pressure differential acting on the individual dispersed phase particles it is given by product of the volume of the fa dispersed phase particle into the pressure differential next is the body force due to gravity as gravitational acceleration is always acting on the dispersed phase particles it exerts a force now the force given by the by gravity is is indicated by this particular equation that is the density of the dispersed phase particle into its volume into the gravitational acceleration next is the drag force now to understand the drag force let us take an example of let us take an example of a steel ball dropped into a glass of oil now due to the viscosity of oil there is some resistance to the motion of the steel ball which drops keeps on dropping down into the oil that is its downward motion now due to the viscosity around the ball a kind of shear layer is created and this is nothing but the drag 
This opposes the downward motion of the uh, steel ball. Now, uh, this drag force is present for all the dispersed phase particles within the continuous phase. And we have to, uh, we have to include its effect in modeling the trajectory for the dispersed phase. This drag force is given by this particular equation. So we see here the drag force is directly dependent on the density, the length scale that is the diameter of the dispersed phase and the difference between the velocity of the continuous phase and the dispersed phase. The CD term here is nothing but the drag coefficient which depends on Reynolds number and there are various configurations used for it, one of which is shown here. Now apart from drag force, other forces also exist. Other forces like lift force and virtual mass force, we will discuss some of them here. First is the lift force. This lift force is created due to vorticity or shear through continuous phase flow field. This is similar to the drag force and hence the configuration also looks similar to it where CL is the lift coefficient. Next is the virtual mass force. Now we will not go into much detail of mathematics associated with the virtual mass force but just try to understand how this force originates. Now when the dispersed particle accelerate, some part of surrounding continuous phase fluid also accelerates. This extra acceleration gives an effect of added mass of or inertial force. We could imagine this that the dispersed phase is carrying some continuous phase along with it and we have an added mass effect of the dispersed phase particle. Now to account for this added mass, we formulate a force called as virtual mass force which is given by this particular equation. You could find details of this in any multiphase modeling book. If you feel that you need to further go into detail of mathematics associated with these forces, any of the Multiphase flow, fundamentals of multiphase flow uh, book can give you uh, further details as well as modeling of multiphase flow, any book related to that can give you details of all these forces and how they are mathematically modeled. So now uh, the current status is we know how we calculate individual forces on the dispersed phase and how we account for them. Using these forces, we write the Newton's law of motion and Newton's law of motion is nothing but mass into acceleration uh, is equal to some of the forces. So from Newton's law of motion, what we got is the velocity. In the acceleration term, what we get is velocity of the particles. Using all these force balance, we calculate the velocity of individual particles and the velocity field of the entire dispersed phase. Now from this velocity field, by basic definition of velocity, that is velocity is nothing but the time differential of location or distance, we formulate an equation for these individual dispersed phase particles which is given by this, that is the differential of the, the time differential of the distance or location is nothing but velocity. So we already know velocity terms for this and what we calculate is the location which is nothing but the trajectory. So a sum of locations of the individual dispersed particle at every time, we, we know the location at every time which forms a, the dispersed phase trajectories. Hence we have modeled the dispersed phase trajectories using the Newton's law of motion and we have also modeled the continuous phase by the governing equations. Hence the Eulerian modeling is used for the continuous phase and Lagrangian modeling is used for the dispersed phase. This is nothing but the Eulerian Lagrangian model. So we are now familiar with the modeling, mathematical modeling of uh, Eulerian Lagrangian approach. If we intend to numerically program the Eulerian Lagrangian approach, what sort of algorithm should we follow? Now let us see this algorithm. Uh, the first type of algorithm is for the transient simulations uh, solved in a coupled way. Coupled meaning we solve the continuous phase equations and the dispersed phase equations together simultaneously, coupled manner. So there are basically four steps in this particular algorithm. First is solve the transient governing equations for continuous phase flow at each cell volume. Then at the end of each continuous phase time step, calculate the dispersed phase velocities and trajectories using the Newton's law of motion. Then based on these velocities and trajectories, calculate the exchange source terms for mass, momentum and energy for that particular time step. 
Now, next is to put this mass momentum and energy source terms into the source term of the governing equations for the continuous phase and then for the next time step again solve the continuous phase governing equations using the source terms calculated from the earlier time step. So we will repeat this procedure till we get a converse solution for each time step and we will carry out internal iterations for each time step. So we will continue this process for each time step and progress in time. The next algorithm is for the steady state simulation using coupled approach. Earlier was for unsteady or transient simulation. So for the steady state simulation, we have a steady state solution and hence we do not need to calculate at each time step. We will just calculate the steady state solution. So for this, what we do is we solve Eulerian steady state equations for continuous phase fluid. Steady state meaning there will be no transient term. There is no differential with respect to time in the governing equations. Once we have solved steady state equation for the continuous phase, we solve Lagrangian equation of motion for dispersed phase and we track them from entry to exit. Meaning we solve the entire trajectory of the dispersed phase that is the entire steady state trajectory. This is same as the earlier that is we use the Newton's law of motion for them and we solve the continuous trajectory from entry to exit of the domain. And once we have obtained the trajectory and velocity for the dispersed phase, the next step is to calculate the mass momentum and energy source terms. We obtain this and put them back into the governing equation for the continuous phase. And we solve the continuous phase equation again that is governing equation that is Eulerian equation again. And we continue this process till we get a steady that is a non-changing solution for the trajectories as well as the as well as the velocity field of the continuous phase. So our steady state convergence will be a stable or steady state continuous phase flow field and a steady state trajectory and flow field for the dispersed phase. Next algorithm is for the steady state simulations using a segregated approach. Segregated meaning we solve the continuous phase equations and the dispersed phase equations separately. We do not solve them simultaneously. This is suitable for those particular problems where the effect of the dispersed phase on the continuous phase is very low and so we do not need to have the two-way coupling between the continuous phase and the dispersed phase. We can just model the continuous phase and have its effect on the dispersed phase. We do not need to go back and calculate the source terms and use them back into the continuous phase. So in this particular algorithm what we solve is we first solve the Eulerian steady state equations for the continuous phase. Then we obtain steady state converse solution for the continuous phase. That is a stable converse non-changing solution for the continuous phase flow field. Using this solution we calculate the dispersed phase solution using equation of motion. That is the Lagrangian approach. This is same that is we calculate the trajectories and velocities using force balance. This is the end of our solution. We do not calculate the source term exchange from the dispersed phase to the continuous phase. So there is only one way coupling that is from the Eulerian from, from the continuous phase to the dispersed phase. We do not calculate the effect of the dispersed phase on the continuous phase. So this is suitable for low volume loading of the dispersed phase. Next is the Eulerian Eulerian model. Now within the Eulerian approach, the dispersed phase is also treated as continuum. That is, we solve governing equations for the continuous phase as well as the dispersed phase. Eulerian equations are solved for all the phases involved. Now we have to handle the coupling between phases. This is done by using various interface transport models to exchange the momentum, energy as well as mass. This particular model is suitable for high dispersed phase volume loading generally greater than 10% mainly because we are taking care of the entire modeling that is we are solving governing equations for the dispersed phase. So we are resolving the dispersed phase in detail. Let us have a look at the governing equations for this particular approach. First for the flow governing equations. Now let us assume we are writing a governing equation for a phase k with a volume fraction alpha k. For this particular phase the governing equation will look like uh, will, will look something like this. He, this is the per source term for this particular uh, the mass source term which arises from the interface transport uh, models. This is the mass source exchange term which arises from the interface transport models. 
the momentum equation for a phase k is written as shown. In this, the term fk is the interface momentum exchange term between the phase k and all other phases present in the system. Additional momentum sources, if any, and the terms relevant to granular flow are grouped together into the term fg. Now the pressure P is shared by all the phases in the Eulerian approach. Therefore the pressure will appear in all the phase equations and it is commonly shared by all phases. Next is the volume of fluid approach. Let us see the governing equations which are used for this particular approach. In this particular approach the flow around individual dispersed particle is resolved. For this, all phases share a single set of governing equations solved using mixture properties. That is, different governing equations are not solved for different phases, but a single govern set of governing equation is solved using mixture properties which are obtained by using the volume fraction and individual phase properties. Such kind of approach is suitable for stratified and separated flows where a distinct interface is present between phases. For the volume of fluid approach, a continuity equation as shown is solved using mixture properties. This is the continuity equation which is solved by using mixture properties. The momentum equation is also solved by using mixture properties. A single set of these two equations is solved which gives the solution for the mixture as such. We need to take care of interface and how to track the interface between different phases. For this, the force balance is used. This particular approach does not track interface directly. For tracking the interface, motion of all phases involved is modeled in order to capture the interface. Now, this is done in a very interesting way. That is, it, is, it solves a type of advection equation for phase volume fraction. If there are n phases, a continuity equation is solved for n minus phase. For phase k, a type of continuity equation is solved for the volume fraction. Such equation is solved for n minus 1 phases. And then the volume fraction information is calculated and it shows it solves for volume fraction and then indirectly obtains the interface because within a cell we know the volume fraction and hence the location of phases. So, this particular approach of force balance or interface tracking. Uh, gives you value or data of volume fraction of different phases within a particular control volume cell. This way we track or find out the interface location. But just think about it. Do you think these advection equations are enough? Special interface techniques are also used to come up with the right configuration of interface. Any guesses why this is done? What I mean is just obtaining the value of volume fraction of a particular cell within a control volume can we know how the phase looks like in that control volume. This is an interesting point to think about. We will clarify this later in the advanced lectures. So to summarize whatever we studied in this lecture, what you should actually understand from this lecture is just some basic points and not all the mathematics that is involved. You should understand the significance of dimensionless numbers that we discussed. You should also be familiar with the physics of each modeling approach, not necessarily the mathematics behind it, but you should just understand which type of equations are solved, whether they are solved for both the phases involved or whether a mixture phase equation is solved, how the volume fraction is tracked, and all these fundamental things and fundamental equations. You should also understand the modeling approach of each model and depending upon them, which type of model you should select for a particular multiphase problem. So this is to uh, summarize whatever we learned in this lecture. These are some of the references that were helpful while preparing this lecture series. So we come to the end of this uh, particular lecture that is the second lecture in the course of uh, multiphase flow modeling. If you have any doubts or if you uh, have any questions 
please feel free to email us or contact us. We will end this particular lecture here and uh, see you in the next lecture. Thank you.